10 ways the power of habits can significantly impact our lives. <laughs> if I do the work, the results will come. If I do the work. <laughs> wow. All right. Hey, everyone, this is Eric. I thank you so much for um, joining me and watching this video on the 10 ways the power of habits can significantly impact our lives. So let's start with number one. Number one is consistently. Habits create reg uh, regularity, helping us maintain a structured lifestyle. So first of all, if you want to, you've got to do to develop a habit. Um, you have to be consistent in what you are trying to achieve. For me, I'm learning to, um, I'm learning to form a habit of talking to and connecting with people every single day um, for network marketing uh, business, right? No matter what it is, you have to be consistent with it. Um, people who go to the gym <clears throat> lift weights every single day. Um, I used to, I was going to the gym back when I was in my 20s. Um, going every single day, being consistent. One day I worked on my upper body. The next day I worked on my legs. And <clears throat> and then just, um, I gave up. Not that I gave up. I kind of injured myself and never went back. And um, the results are what you see. But can I make a change? Yes, I can. Um, but I have to be consistent with it. Um and, but if you create the consistency, if you do it every single day over and over again, and you create the consistency and you create a habit um, to create it, to do it regularity, you know, to do it regular, um, it will help to maintain a structured lifestyle. Number two, eff uh, efficiency. They automate actions, reducing decision-making fatigue and increasing productivity. Hard to pronounce. <laughs> so uh, you want to be efficient. Um, and consistency habits will also, when you become habits, then I think my mentor says, um, I forgot the way he uses the term. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, forgive me. But it has something to do with it has something to do with um, going from the mindset of knowing to just doing it. Kind of like when you drive a car and you first started driving a car, um, you're, you're driving, you first driving a car, you you learn how to drive and you get in the driver's seat and you you always have the, the your hands on the steering wheel on the in certain positions and you're aware of your surroundings. You're looking up and down the streets and, and you're aware of when you stop and when you slow down. But then once you've been driving for many, many years, it becomes second nature to you. And when it becomes second nature to you, you just drive next you know, you're like, wow, how did I get here? Because you've been dating the whole time that you've been driving. <laughs> so, um, I think that's right there is, you know, you automate your actions, your habits by driving over and over again and doing, riding the bike, just whatever. You automate those type of things because you're being consistent and you're creating habits. And so you reduce the decision making fatigue. You're not really making decisions anymore. You're just doing it and doing it and doing it, right? And by doing it over and over and over again, you are increasing productivity. Go achievement. Number three, establishing habits, aligning with our goals, increases the likelihood of success. So you're creating a habit, you are being consistent, you're being efficient, and you are, you have goals. You want to say network marketing, um, you want to make this much money within this much time. You want to connect with this many people a day for 
and be connected to this many people within a month. Okay. So there's that right there. And, and, and um, that increases the likelihood of success. Number four, behavioral change. Building new habits can help replace unwanted behaviors with positive ones. Got to have a, a change, behavioral change, you know. Um, for example, you know, oh my gosh, I've worked all day long. Um, I'm talking for myself. This is what, what I do. Um, I'm learning to not be like that. Man, I've worked all day long. I don't know what to do. I'm tired. You know, I, I'm i talking to a lot of people. Like people keep messaging me. You know, and they just want to talk to me all day long. Um, and I get into a piss poor attitude. I do, you know. And so, I... Um, it's an unwanted behavior. And I, what I need to do is I need to replace that unwanted behavior with a positive one. You know, um, I need to build new habits. What, what, I, what am I going to do? Let's say I work um, eight hours on my job. When I get off work and I get home and I go to relax, connect with some people. No matter if it's 10, 20 people, message them, connect with them. How are you doing? I hope your day is good. You know, um, listen, do you know anyone looking to make some extra money like that? Okay. Or just whatever you're doing, right? Number five, personal growth. Habit formation fosters self-discipline and cultivates continuous improvement. Personal growth is very important. I can't stress it enough. Um, uh, there are certain things that I do every single day. Did I do it at first? No, I did not. I had to develop the way I had to kind of develop a habit and I'm still developing the habit because <laughs> I'll get off balance. But I have learned this, that if you will, um, most phones are like this. If you will go to your alarm and you will set your alarm of something that you want to do, like um, for personal growth, you want to watch something that... Um, something to say in my life a mentor my mentor teaches me to do um a something to do with success something to do with meditation i will set a timer for that hour and i'll have it labeled of what that needs to be done of what i need to do at that time for example 2 p.m central standard time every single day my mentor has a live and I'm there every single day. Now, sometimes I can't chat through the through the box on YouTube, but I'm always there listening. Now, sometimes I can't be there. So if I'm not there, and I try to be, then I will watch the replay. Um, so uh, personal, personal growth, um, habit formation, foster self-discipline. So you want to um, have personal growth. You want to... Um, Learn self-discipline because it will cultivate continuous improvement. Number six, health improvement. Healthy habits like exercise and proper nutrition promote physical well-being. That is so true. Okay. Can't stress that enough. Drinking a lot of water, eating healthy, um, eating healthy and um, exercise. Um me, I'm I'm having a little bit of a medical problem. Um, my uh, my bones are too big. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm um, sorry. I had <laughs> no. I do have a medical problem. Um, but uh, I think of the which explains the, the weight thing. But um, it's okay. I'm gonna do making appointments with doctors. Um, anyway, so let's go on. To the to the next one. Um, number seven, mental well-being. Habits such as med meditation, like I was talking about, or journaling, or contribute to mental clarity and emotional stability. Mental well-being is really good. You got to have your place, your mind in the right state of mind, positive, 
um, enthusiastic, um, excited. Where's your life going to be in three years from now? Are you still going to be working at the same place? Or are you going to be giving to charities? Are you going to be building your own home? What are you going to do? Are you going to give to foster kids? You know, I mean, so many things you can do with a better income that you can't do working on your job. You know, I mean, I'm thinking about it. I'm really excited about all of this. Number eight, time management. Effective habits help manage time better by prioritizing prior, prioritizing tasks and routines. Effective habits help manage time better. Forming a habit of time management helps manage time better by prioritizing tasks and routines. And that's something that I do on my phone. Setting the alarms, making those my priority to do those things because I have found that if I don't put a timer down, you know what? I'm not doing it. I can say that I'm going to do it, but I don't. I will find myself going to doing something else. Number nine, relationship building. Something I talked about earlier, right? Positive habits like active listening can strengthen relationships. God gave you, the, you always hear this saying, God gave you two ears, one mouth, use it, right? Sometimes people just want to be heard. They want to talk about their feelings and things like that, and they don't want advice. Sometimes people just have a lot on their heart. They have a lot of stress and, and things like that, and they just they want to they, they just want for someone to listen to them, okay? And without, without giving them advice. Now, if they ask for advice, then it's good. You can give them advice if you have the advice to give them. But to be honest, I've been kind of learning is that you can't really give advice to someone if you've never been in their shoes before. So, you know, for example, um, an alcoholic, okay? It's better to get advice from another alcoholic that overcame it than somebody that is a counselor that's never had that problem before. This is, I can relate because I'm a counselor. It's a big difference. Now me, I used to be an alcoholic. I did. Love drinking. I'm going to just be honest with you. I love the drinking. I love not being in control. I didn't like the hangovers and things like that that I had every single day. But um, I can't still relate to a person who is an alcoholic. And the reason why I cannot relate to them is because I was supernaturally delivered through the Lord Jesus Christ. So because I cannot, re because of that, I can't relate to someone who is an alcoholic because, well, I was supernaturally delivered and I have no cravings or nothing. So... But can I relate to them being drunk and not being able to control themselves and wanting to drink all the time? Yeah, I could. Because I remember my model was this. I'm only going to drink a couple. When I drank a couple when I got buzzed, I'm already buzzed. I might as well get drunk. When I got drunk, I might as well get more drunk and more drunk and more drunk until I just passed out. All right? So anyway. Number Ten. So anyway, number nine was relationship building. Positive habits like active listening can strengthen relationships. Number ten, long-term impact. Consistent habits compound over time, leading to significant positive changes in life. So long-term impact. So being consistent in your habits First, you have to form a habit or doing it over and over again, being consistent. Okay, the compound over time, compound interest over compound interest is the world's greatest miracle, according to Albert Einstein, which it is, um, leading to significant positive changes in life. So that is the 10 ways 
the power of habits can significantly impact our lives. Number one, consistency. Number two, efficiency. Number three, go achievement. Number four, behavioral change. Number five, personal growth. Number six, health improvement. Number seven, mental well-being. Number eight, time management. Number nine, relationship building. And number 10, long-term impact. Anyway, I thank you and thanks for watching. And leave a comment. God bless. Bye. Hey, I want to again say thank you so much for watching the video. Um, I really do appreciate you. I have a little bit of a favor to ask you. Do you know anyone that is looking to make some extra money? Someone that um, I can lead to my mentor um, who has helped 67 people make over a million a year. We're looking for really good people for a great company that we are in. And we're just looking for motivated people who is tired of struggling, who is tired of um, working the nine to five job that want to have a more fulfilled, a more successful life. So if you know of anyone that is looking to make some extra money, we're actually looking for people who are six figures, then please let me know and I will send you more information. God bless and have a great day.